You've got to hand it to Porsche, haven't you, really? They've basically been selling the same car for 60 years. The original Porsche 911 came out in 1964, and here we are 58 years later, and they're still selling it. And these days you can get it in GT, in Carrera, in Turbo, in Turbo S, in Carrera S, in Softtop, in Targa, in Convertible. I said Convertible already. Uh, and the combinations are endless and can very confusing, but they've plumbed their customer base. There is a Porsche 911 for everyone, and the customers love it as well. If ever there is a customer base that can talk things up and excite themselves about the possibility of deviated stitching or something else like that, it's the Porsche customer base. Hence, these days in the post-pandemic world of short supply of cars, GT3 models, for example, have regularly been selling for over 100,000 over MSRP. And in fact, there was one dealer recently who sold a GT3 Touring at 180,000 over MSRP. So what do you do in this market? If you're a new Porsche enthusiast and you want something that is truly legitimate and real and a Porsche that anyone could get in and drive and feel proud about, what do you do? What do you buy? Not everybody can afford 350,000 of a GT3. Well, today I'm going to make the strong argument that you should in fact be going older, not newer, and not spending that 350,000, and that value and the essence of a Porsche 911 is with the older ones. So let's take a look at this rather special car. This is by no means a standard car. This is a Porsche hot rod. And it's here that we see why this car is so special. This normally, from the factory, would have had a 2.7 litre flat six engine. This is a 1974 car. Not this one, however. The engine was swapped with a 3.2, which was then bought out to 3.4. So instead of 170, 175 horsepower that the original engine would have put out, this one is looking at more like 260 horsepower. Now that is a similar amount of power to the original Porsche 930, the 911 Turbo. And you'll remember earlier in a video on, earlier on my channel, I tried one of those and the power band is right at the end of that, not with this. So this is a true driver's car. And also I quite like the outlaw image that comes with having an engine swap and having it all done. Now, this car is actually for sale. I'll put the details of the, of the car uh, in the video description below. But if I read from the blurb that comes with it, uh, it is actually a 1974 car, as I said, uh, Type 915 five-speed manual gearbox. It has ported and polished cylinder heads, a billy boat stainless exhaust, uh, aluminium front brake calipers, Bilstein struts, and West Weltmeister front and rear sway bars. So this is built to be driven. This is a firmer car than the standard one. It is a faster car than the standard one. But let's give you a little walk around so you can see more of the interior and the exterior of the car, uh, and I'll tell you a bit more about that. Now, the first thing to say, of course, is what about this orange? If ever there is a colour that suits a 1974 Porsche 911, it is this orange. It's believed to be the correct colour, the original colour on this car. It has received a, a respray, which is in 2009, which is good from a distance. Not bad up front, up close, but a few spots here and there that could do with improving. But remember, this is a driver's car. Who cares if it's got the odd bubble here and there? Nothing is serious. This presents really nicely and one of the things I love about these original early cars is the chrome or the aluminium that goes around the windows. It looks so much better and much more classic than the black ones that you see on later cars. It has the accordion or concertina bumpers on it which I think look great actually, it doesn't offend me at all. You could put uh, the more sort of plasticky ones on if you wanted to, there's endless amounts of aftermarket things you could put on this car but I think it just looks beautiful the way it is. Let's take a look at the interior. Is there a more inviting sight than that? A door open on a classic Porsche 911 Outlaw. Let's go in and have a look. This car has everything you need and nothing you don't if you are interested in a driver's car. So of course you will not find heated or cooled seats. You will not find a cruise control. In fact on this car it doesn't even have its original steering wheel, it has a lovely Momo steering wheel. 
but basic is the way forward. Remember, this is a driver's car. I think I've said that once or twice before. And the aim is to get you maximum enjoyment out of the drive. So in a moment we'll go on a, on a drive and see what it's like. Is this a car you could live with for high days and holidays and Sundays or is this a car that you'd want to do distance in? Let me show you. All right, let's take this thing for a spin. Now, the first thing you notice is the howl of that flat six, that air-cooled flat six. And there's plenty of power plenty of power and it's a linear delivery as well so when I was driving the 930 the 911 turbo of this era I think that was a 78 this is a 74 uh, the power came on at three and a half four thousand revs and then it was all gone by six thousand and it came on very fast hence its name as a yeah, nickname as the Widowmaker uh, but in this I don't even have to change down. There is plenty of torque here. And it is easy to drive. And it handles flat as well. The suspension modifications on this car hold it to the road. It really is quite an impressive thing. Am I completely sold on the fact of being in it all day? Well, you can probably see the beads of sweat falling down my face. Air conditioning would be nice. <laughs> so it needs air conditioning, I would say. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to go along with the window open. Now I've got it shut, because I want you guys to be able to hear what I'm saying, and particularly, that engine. But I think if you're gonna spend all day in it, oh my God, you'd be able to wring your shirt out afterwards, I suspect. But the seats are comfortable, nothing wrong with the seats. You could stay in these seats all day if you wanted to. So I guess it's a question of finding the right uh, day to do an all day or in, in this. Um, the suspension is fairly hard, but it doesn't affect the ride too badly, I would say. Um, it is fairly noisy in here. Now, I've been making a big deal that it's a driver's car. And therefore, I love the fact that it is noisy in here. Um, but if you were using it a lot, might get on your nerves, I suppose. You have to buy, you have to see this car for what it is, and maybe not what you'd like it to be. Uh, and what it is, it, I'll say it again, it's a driver's car, uh, and that means it's a visceral experience. Cars of this age are a visceral experience anyway, um, and this one is no different. In fact, it's probably even more visceral because it's got the exhaust, it's got the bigger engine, it's got the firmer suspension. It's designed for a purpose and that might not be you actually that might not be your gig um, and actually it's not the gig of the owner of this car he's actually just bought a 912 uh, because he prefers the sedate nature of that um, but it is my kind of car I'm, I'm telling you away from third from low revs it takes you from 20 miles an hour to 60 very easy and as I come on the brakes they're up there they grip well they take a shove um, but they grip well. They are not the sort of very modern servo-assisted brakes where you slightly touch them and you end up with your face in the windscreen. Um, very different to that. But once you do push them, they stop well, actually. Quite impressive. Let's try that again. There we are, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And as you go through the twisties, you find yourself steering as much with the brake and the accelerator as you do with the steering wheel. It dances around a little bit. I haven't pushed it to the limit because it's not my car, but you can feel it doing that. And at low speeds, because it's light, the lack of power assisted steering makes no difference at all in my opinion. Just done a quick turn there. And we're away, and then my arms don't feel any the worse the wear for it. That's going nowhere near the red line, by the way. We're up, red line's at about 6,250. We were up at about 4,500 there. 
and I'm moseying along now at about two and a half thousand so you can hear the noise right now I think I'm a little bit in love with this it wraps around you it's small you can see the corners of the car not out the back maybe but certainly at the front with the two headlights at the front you can uh, you can really see the corners of the car uh, which helps you position it on the road and actually I don't feel there's a need to go flat out in this car to have a lot of fun and that is also the point of an older car the newer cars are, I've been saying a lot longer the Carrera is probably the one to have people make me uh, the case that the Carrera S is the one to have of the new range because it comes with uh, torque vectoring and all that sort of stuff which just helps you uh, get round but the Carreras are the ones to have because you have to rev them out a bit to get pleasure out of them. A Turbo S that I drove last year, a 992 Turbo S, my god it was probably the fastest car that I've ever driven um, but also it, you know you barely get it out of first gear and you're doing 120 miles an hour. This one you're having fun in second gear because it is low to the ground, it's small, the noise is in your face, the suspension is harder uh, and that that wailing of the flat six there's no the air cooled flat six I should say right uh, there's no substitute for that I'm afraid none at all as ever the 915 gearbox takes a bit of getting used to but the gears are smooth, and you, it just takes a bit of finding them and getting used to them. But they're pretty small, pretty, pretty smooth, pretty cool. So, in conclusion then, what do we think about this car? You can tell I'm smiling already, right? And uh, This is one of the nicest Porsches I have ever driven. And I've got to drive a lot over the past two years of doing this channel, two and a bit years of doing uh, this Porsche channel. This is one of the greats, I have to say. <laughs> because it has the power, uh, it has the orange paint, it has the chrome around, or the aluminium around the uh, windows, it has the hardened suspension, it has the image, but most of all, it has the essence of the 911. In fact, it doesn't even have the essence of the 911. This is the original 911. When you buy a newer Porsche, in my opinion, they're all imitations of this. This was the longest in the range in terms of time. Went from 74 to 89. And 15 years is enough time to build up that reputation. When you buy a new car, you're getting a pastiche of what this car is like. And you can't replicate that. The newer cars are so much bigger. Uh, they don't even look the same. They don't sound the same. They're just very different. But this is the real deal, and it feels like it. Even though you could argue, well, in fact, it's not the real deal. It's an outlaw, it's a hot rod, it's got the wrong engine in it, it doesn't have matching numbers, and um, it's been resprayed. Uh, for me, none of that matters, and you can see the sweat rolling down my face as I drive it. <laughs> I still love it. It is drama, it is a Porsche 911. This is what this is, a Porsche 911. And you guys know I've been a, 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 a water-cooled guy. I have a Boxster. I've had a 996 Carrera. Uh, and I've even tried uh, the, uh, the SC, the 911 SC before, a uh, 1980s edition. You might remember my Three Amigos video. I tried a 930 and totally loved that, I must admit, but 930s, to get a good one these days, 130 grand, they probably doubled in price over the past two years. 150 grand maybe. This is nowhere near that price. And as a result, this has become the affordable gem. Uh, and therefore, this is the one you should buy. But it depends what you like. Given the sweat is pouring down my face, I would argue that if you were driving down to the south, on a, sum, on a summer's couple of days, uh, you would probably not take this. You would be, well, you'd be very dehydrated, um, but I think it would probably piss you off a little bit. Um, if 
you were doing sort of 12 hours in the car. But if you're going to your local cars and coffee, oh, for God's sake, get this. <laughs> it's absolutely tremendous. But I would say this is as fast as a 930, I would say. As near as makes no difference. Maybe it's a, t a tad slower, my butt dyno might say. Um, but it also doesn't have the characteristics of that turbo engine. I don't think this would be very dangerous in the wet. Uh, I think it would be fine. I think the tyres are okay. Uh, and it doesn't have that Widowmaker sort of feeling to it. So there we are. Well guys, it's time to hand the key back to this lovely, imperfect, but completely perfect to me, 911. I have to say, I've thoroughly enjoyed my couple of hours with this car. I'm smiling from ear to ear. The noise, uh, the speed, the torque, the fact that it is an original 911, to me, just, it just makes me happy. So this car is not for everybody. If you are somebody who wants to go out in a real 911, an orange one at that, uh, and go out and whack the country roads on a Sunday, this will do the job and you should buy this car. It is for sale. Have a look at the uh, video's description below and it'll tell you more details of it. If, however, you want to keep your bum cool, as we call them in the UK, with cooled seats, and you want adaptive cruise control, and all of those things, head-up displays, go away. You won't like this car. <laughs> this is not for you. The back of my shirt is absolutely soaking. There is no air conditioning in this car. But I don't care. And I don't care because the sound, the power, the colour, all of those things. Anyway, you get the message. Thank you very much, Patrick, for letting me drive it. Really appreciate that. And John for making it happen as well. Please like and subscribe if this is your kettle of fish. We'll be back on the box to next time, uh, which is no bad thing either. That's also a good car. Maybe not quite as good as this, but it is also a good car. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.